Hey there, how's it going? I'm Andy Sterkowitz. I'm a self-taught programmer, and in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna answer the question, can you become a programmer in only three months? And the reason that I wanna answer this is because there are a lot of people on the internet, on YouTube, who have gotten a job within three months from the time that they started their first tutorial, or their first class, or their first book, to the time that they got their first offer. And so I just wanted to give you my take on it and give you a realistic approach or explanation of what is really going on there. So if you're new here, by the way, if you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkowitz. Like I said, I taught myself to become a software developer five years ago. And right now I'm a mentor and coach to everyday people who are aspiring developers, people who want to change their careers into this field. So I highly recommend to subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. Okay, so let's just answer the question right off the bat here. So can you become a programmer in only three months from the day you start programming to the day you get your first job? Of course. There's nothing stopping you. There's no laws that are stopping you. There's no thing out there that says that you have to be doing this for a certain amount of time. At the end of the day, it comes down to will someone hire you based on who you are, based on the skill set that you have. And some companies will hire you way before you are ready to become a programmer. Now, if you are shooting for this, if you are dead set, you say, I'm going to become a programmer in three months, what I would say to you is this. It's all about probabilities, and there's many factors that come into play. So I'm first going to cover what factors are important for you to make this happen if you are dead set on doing it in three months. And then we'll talk about what I would do if I were starting all over again, like how I would try to make sure that I was going to be able to do this in three months. So first, let's talk about the factors that come into play. So the first factor that's really important is just your expectations. Your expectations have to be properly set before you get into this. I've seen a lot of people who have really poor expectations, meaning they think they're gonna get into this, read a few books, and all of a sudden they're gonna go and start applying for jobs based on the fact that they read a few books. The, the, the proper expectation for this is more like you're gonna be training for a marathon in three months, meaning you're gonna to have to change, overhaul your lifestyle more than likely. You're going to have to spend a lot of time studying. You're gonna to have to spend a lot of time just sitting in front of a computer, just racking your brain about how to fix this code that you've broken or build this application. And so if your expectations are not in line, this is going to be really hard. You're going to have to really be disciplined and focused for three months, then you're probably not going to be able to do this. From there, you have to figure how much study time you have. So do you have a family? Do you have a full-time job? Or can you study just as much as you want as your heart's content? And that really makes a difference as well because I coach a lot of people who have a full-time job and a family and normal life stresses. And so for them, they're only able to put in 15, 20, maybe 25 hours per week. If you can put in more time than that, then you're going to be at an advantage and you can make more progress as far as studying and learning goes. So how much time you have available to you plays a major role in this. And then the last thing, the last factor that plays a role in this is luck. And I'm laughing at this because it's, look, I don't care who you are, but luck will play a role in this. Luck always plays a role. Anytime you're going to get a job, it just depends on whether the recruiter at the company sees your resume at the right time, whether you apply at the right time, and whether you get the, the interviewer who's going to like you or, or whatever. There's so much luck that comes into play that people don't realize. And so with this journey, you're always trying to increase the probability that someone will say yes, that someone will give you a job offer. And that's really most important to realize amongst all of this is that there is you have a less control than you probably think. And so all you can really focus on is getting your skills better and then putting yourself in a position where you can actually get hired. Okay, so from here, the question is, how would I set up a plan for myself? If I go back in the past to 2014 when I first taught myself to code, how would I go back then and set myself up so that I can increase the probability that I can get a job within three months? So there's a couple different things that I focus on. The first thing I would do is I would find a mentor or a guide somebody who is in the field, who is a programmer, who can help me set up a plan for the next three months. Um, you have to have some sort of game plan or roadmap that you're going to be following over the course of three months because you don't have much time to waste. And if you're not in the field, it's extremely difficult to know what is important to learn and what is not important to learn? What can you gloss over and what do you have to spend a lot of time on? This is the thing that trips up most people who get in the field because when you go and you read blog posts, when you go and watch YouTube, people will list out all the things you need to know and the truth is that they're 
typically not telling you, okay, you should prioritize this one concept over this concept. This concept, you can just read a quick blurb on, on this concept you have to really spend a lot of time on. And so a mentor or a guide is really going to help you to figure out what you need to focus on, what projects to build in your portfolio, which is really, really important, by the way. You don't want to have all simple projects. You don't want to have too complex of projects. And at the end of the day, too, that mentor or guide can give you feedback. So when you are creating projects, when you are writing code, they can give you pretty much instant feedback or some delayed feedback about some of the programming practices. You can do it one way or the other. Um, you can watch as many tutorials as you want. You can read as many books as you want. But at the end of the day, I have found that there's no quicker way to learn and there's no better way to learn than to have somebody in front of you. Now, to find a mentor is not easy. You have to put in a lot of work here. You have to, if you don't know any software developers, you got to figure out a way to network to get to know someone or, you know, actually hire a mentor if that's the case as well. Like whatever it takes, getting a mentor is worth every single penny because there's too much to learn in this field to figure it all out in your on your own. So find a mentor, try to stick to one, by the way, don't try to get like six or seven different mentors because you have people telling you all different things. Find one really good one, maybe two at the most, hopefully they agree on mostly everything and stick to that plan that you're gonna create with them. The next thing I would focus on if I really want to increase the probability or likelihood that I got a job within three months is really focusing on my strategies to learn or learning how to learn or learn more intelligently, right, if that makes sense. Because most people's inclination, if they want to decrease the time that they're going to learn something to a high degree, is they're going to put in more hours. They're going to cram. And all the scientific studies out there about cramming show that it doesn't work. Like if you think you're going to put in 12 to 14 hour study sessions over the course of three months, and that somehow is going to make make you catch up to a regular developer, it's misguided to say the least. Like first of all, your brain is very similar to a muscle in that it needs rest. It needs time off in order for it to function at a high level. You have to get your sleep. You have to spend time away like doing other activities than just studying. And so studying smart is very, very important. Using the Pomodoro technique is something I recommend. It helps you to really in a disciplined way uh, focus on periods of time of work versus periods of time of rest. So I highly recommend implementing that. I recommend having off time, meaning like at a certain point each day, you don't study anymore, no matter how much you want to, right? Like having a cutoff period of like 6 or 7 p.m. every day, but before then you could study as much as you want. Um, even beyond that, when it comes to programming and study time, you can't just learn this from reading a book or doing what I call passive learning. You can't be sitting there watching a tutorial 100% of the time. You actually have to be using or uh, implementing what you're learning and doing hands-on learning. So building projects, tinkering with code, reading other people's code, that's just as important. And so you have to be spending at least half of your time doing active learning by building projects. In order for you to build a portfolio of projects and show potential employers that you know what you're doing, you have to be building things, right? And so I've always said this, I've said that this a million times on my channel, but you have to spend at least half of your time actually coding because that's the thing that's going to help you implement the things that you're reading in books or watching in tutorials but there's no substitute for that so make sure when it comes to learning smart that you're spending a lot of time with your active learning that you're not cramming that you're giving yourself time off that you're using the pomodoro technique or some technique that limits your study time because cramming is not going to work you have to study intelligently all right now the last thing i'd really say here if you're going to get a job in three months is you're going to have to apply way before you feel ready to actually start applying for jobs. Um, I don't care who you are, like 90%, 90, I would say 99% of the population, if you're going to really intensely study for three months, you're not going to feel ready to be a programmer. Hell, after a year, most people don't feel ready to be a programmer. And so you really have to be comfortable with this concept that when three months comes around, you're going to be like, really? I don't think I'm ready. Maybe I should wait a little bit longer. So you have to mentally prepare yourself that you're going to feel like a fish out of water. You're going to feel very scared. You're going to feel like there's a lot of imposter syndrome going on when you first start applying, but that's totally normal. At the end of the day, look, if you go out there and you apply for jobs uh, after the three month period and you don't get much feedback or you fail a bunch of interviews, then okay, you got a lot of feedback about what you need to change moving forward. And so you have to increase your timeline. Or what could happen is you go out there, you are green behind the ears, right? As they say, meaning you don't have a lot of skill or experience, but somebody sees that you're very eager, very passionate, and they really like what they've seen from 
the interview process and from what you've coded so far in your projects that they're willing to take a chance on you. And that's really what you're betting on. Look, at the end of the day, you're probably not going to work for Google. You're probably not going to work for Facebook. You are probably going to work for a smaller company or middle-sized company who you just happen to meet the right recruiter or the right interviewer. They really like what you bring to the table and they know that they can work with the raw talent that they see and the progress that you made so far. And that's really what you're banking on. You're not banking on being a perfect candidate. That takes more time. That takes that six months, nine months, a year or longer to craft your skills to a high degree to prepare yourself for the interview process. At three months, the chances are going to be really good that you're not quite ready. And that's okay. And that's totally okay. But at the end of the day, if you're really dedicated to doing this in three months, if you're just going to say, like, screw it, I'm going to do it, just prepare yourself that you're going to feel like an imposter. You're going to feel like you're not ready at three months. And that's okay. You just have to move on through it. So those are really, that's everything here. I hope you have better expectations about this whole become a programmer in three months craze that's been going on. At the end of the day, if you're really dead set in doing it, know that you have to take it serious, know that you are going to have to study intelligently, that you're going to have to apply before you feel ready. And that at the end of the day, this is all about luck and you're just trying to play the best odds that you can, right? Increase your probability, as I like to say. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Uh, YouTube really likes that apparently, that, that increases the like that I'll get more views. So if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, guys, if you are looking for more content from me, I actually have a free Facebook group that you can join at andysterkwitz.com forward slash group. I'll also put a link in the description below, but that group's really about high quality content. I try to keep spammers out as much as possible and occasionally I'll do some live Q&A events. So I highly recommend checking out the group when you get a chance. Other than that, that's really all I got for today. So thank you so much as always for watching and take care.